My name is Sarah Zafar, um, and in terms of my background, um, my ethnicity is Pakistani. Uh, my family, or I would say my parents, came here around the 70s. Um, and ever since then, we've just literally settled in Manchester and, and been here ever since. Um, what did my father used to do? Um, he used to be a homeopath. Um, so he used to sort of, you know, provide remedies or, you know, medicines for the local community. When he first came here and, you know, he just literally got his degree and stuff like that, he actually started by giving out free remedies and, and free consultations to the community just to sort of build about his, his business and sort of make a difference where he could. Um, following on from that, after it being successful, he set up his own clinic, which was in Levenjum. Um, and I think just before he passed away, I think it had been sort of 25 years um, of him running that business. Um, so it was really successful. He used to do a lot of um, clinics, you know, in and around the UK and TV programs and, so, and stuff like that, giving out free advice um, on, health, on health problems and health conditions. Um, and I used to be part of that. I used to travel around with him and support him and sort of do his admin work and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I think that's sort of when we came and, and what, what he sort of did since then. Um, and yeah, mum used to tag along and help out where she could. Um, but no, it was, it was good. And how about your education and that process and, and then ending up working here? Um, so in terms of my education, um, I've actually got a master's in, in management. Um, before this, what I used to do was, I was very much into sport. I used to play a lot of sport. I actually played um, professionally with Manchester City ladies for a number of years. Um, I then got dragged into other things and I just didn't have time to get back into it. Um, but when I left Manchester City Ladies and I, and I finished playing football, I then um, sort of set up a fitness club um, for the community. So I became a fitness instructor and I was holding regular classes in and around Manchester um, just to provide something and, and to give back. And it was specifically women only to give women a chance to sort of come out and express themselves and, and be part of something. Um, after that, I started working in events. Um, locally in, in um, Wally Range and now um, I've just found my way into Human Relief Foundation. And your role here? A fundraising manager as well as managing um, all the staff that I have. Uh, so I manage obviously the Manchester office, um, I then manage uh, Sheffield, I have staff there and I also manage Liverpool, I have staff there as well um, and obviously my team here which is, which is one of the bigger teams. Um, it's amazing in terms of what I do. Um, so here within the community, we actually organize events, anything relating to fundraising to, to bring in donations. And then it's all about going abroad and spending donations in the right places at the right time when they need it most. Okay. And then can you talk about how, um, how HRF survives financially, if you like, because there's, there's, a, there's got to be a continual income inflow of of money hasn't that to keep, keep it going of so. course of course so in terms of the way we fund ourselves we have a lot of charity shops across the UK so we get a lot of income through our charity shops and that helps us with our expenses and, and, and things like that we also get regular funding um, through different organizations or you know different partnerships and things like that when we're arranging events we also try and put you know get sponsorship or put um, like a reg fee on there for tickets and things like that to cover our expenses and obviously gift aid gift aid goes a long long way so that helps us you know keep us going and, and keeps us sustainable it must be a hard hard role if it's part of your role deciding where that money goes because there's so many causes and so many needs on there so. it's it's extremely difficult and you know it takes me back to last year um, and it, we were just falling into Ramadan and I was speaking to my staff and I just said, look, you know, we've just had a crisis in Syria. Things are really bad in Yemen. And obviously the Rohingya crisis that had recently happened, the weather was hot and, and they were really struggling. And, you know, at the same time, there was stuff going on in Palestine. And it was literally like, you know, there's only so many of us and there's only so many funds that come in. So it was <coughs> a case of who do we help? How do, you, how do you decide that? 
it's always a difficult one. It's always a difficult one. I think um, me personally, it's about where I can make the most amount of impact in that short amount of time. Um, because they're all as needy as each other, but it's it's what's going to make the biggest difference. Or obviously, what is what is more dire? From this little office here in Russia, Manchester, we travel and we work all over the world. Uh, places like Ghana, Somalia, Iraq, Palestine, Yemen, uh, Jordan. And it's been an incredible experience for me because I am one of those people that travel out into all these different in different parts of the world. Um, I've been Iraq a number of times. I'm due to travel out again next month. Uh, I've been to Jordan aiding Syrian refugees many times. Again, I'm, I'm going very, very soon. I'll be traveling out to Lebanon um, in just a number of weeks. Um, I've also been to Bangladesh when the crisis was happening uh, with the people of Rohingya. Um, so it's been an incredible experience, but more so it's, it's the difference and the change that we have been making every time we travel out. Um, it's something I'll continue to do. It's something I'll, I give my life and soul towards because in essence, I feel as though if I don't come to work, people die or people are not being helped. And that's, it's as simple as that. It is. So can you talk about one campaign that you've, where, where have you come back from recently? Um, uh, recently, I just came back from Ghana. It's, okay. it's literally probably been about three weeks. So what was what's going on out there? What were you helping with? Um, so we actually went out. Uh, we work in the north of Ghana, which is an area called Tamale. Um, there's not much there. Um, the south of Ghana, yep, it, it's brilliant. It's been made up. It's had development and everything else, but not the north. So we, we travelled up and we actually went to set up, or let's say open um, a school, um, a faith center and water mechanical system but the main project all around there is actually setting up water projects because they're so scarce and because obviously africa you know they have a lot of droughts and you know they have a lot of dry landscape and stuff like that so water is the most essential thing in those areas okay excellent and where's your next trip to uh, my next trip will be iraq uh, right. followed by lebanon in the same trip itself uh, so we'll be going out to set up uh, food projects um, so everyone can just have something to, to eat as, as, the, as Ramadan kicks in uh, while they'll be fasting and stuff like that, yeah. So how, do, how does, let's say if you're going to Iraq, have you got representatives out there or you link up with, with um, like-minded people, organisations, how does it work? Yeah, so in many of these countries we actually have registered offices. Uh, Human Relief Foundation was set up because of the Iraq Gulf War in 1991. So we actually have a very strong base and a very strong team in, in, in Iraq. I think we've probably got around four or five offices actually there. Um, and our Iraq office is an unbelievable place to be. Um, very, very, very intelligent people work there. Um, only recently I was asking about you know, what jobs they do and, and what they used to do before obviously joining Human Relief Foundation. And two of them actually used to be pilots. Um, one of them actually used to be a project engineer, one of the best in the whole of Iraq. Um, but they've chosen this path, similarly like we have, um, to help and aid people around the world. Um, where Iraq, in Iraq is, is it, where's the office exactly? Uh, we've got one in um, Irbil, which is the Kurdish region. Region. We have one in Mosul. We have one in Baghdad. We have one in Tikrit. Um, so yeah, we have we have quite a few offices there. Wow, yeah. excellent. But Iraq is because it's been under war for so long. It's nothing stands there anymore. It's it's a difficult place to be. Um, and, and working there is, is a difficult thing, but we're doing amazing stuff there. So you come back in a better state of mind than when you actually left. Yeah, absolutely. Which hopefully is the, the purpose, isn't it? And the, and the goal. So, it is. I mean, yeah. a lot of the time, you know, people come back very upset with what's, with, with what's happening. And sometimes when they see the scale of things, it's very different or very difficult to contemplate and just think that the little bit you're doing is actually making a difference. So if you can accept what you're doing is making a difference, then you, you feel hold, hold heartedly about what you're doing. Excellent, okay. Yeah. So can we move on to the, the MHRF? So the, is it the Mini Human Relief Foundation? Mini HRF, yeah, yeah. <laughs> something that you've been excited called? to hear about. It is, it's interesting. Um, so Mini HRF is a project that has been set up 
um, for basically young children. Um, so we hold um, classes once a month and every single class or course is something different. So it's about arts and crafts, it's about designing, it's about being creative, it's about teaching these young people, young children, you know, just how to express themselves and how to do something different or just learn a new skill. Um, so very recently uh, we organised one session and what they were actually doing was uh, making beads, so bracelets. Um, so we actually taught them how to do it and how to make it and everything else. And then the beautiful thing was what, once they had designed or made whatever they needed to, we actually took that abroad and gave them out to children that, that needed them or were in schools in, in different areas of the world. Um, so we've got another class now happening next month, like I say, every month. And again, if it's something that is produced and we can take out following month, we will do so. Yeah. Excellent. And how do, how do the children connect with the, the children that are receiving it? Do they see like photographs of that or how, how yeah. do they understand Yeah, so this? while we were in Ghana, we actually took loads of pictures and loads of videos of us <laughs> distributing these bracelets that they had made. That's really interesting. Can you, where, where are you heading to? What, what are your aspirations or, or ambitions? For the future? Well, I've been with Human Relief Foundation for four years now, um, and to be honest, before then it didn't really exist in Manchester. So, what we've achieved in those four years has been absolutely amazing. In terms of moving forward and, and, and my aspirations, for me, it's not about feeding hundreds and thousands of people or helping hundreds and thousands of people, it's about helping millions. And that's what we're going to do as an office. We're going to keep growing. We're going to keep expanding. We're going to tr build our team as much as we can to make sure that we are out there changing the lives of millions and not just hundreds of thousands. Okay. But literally two years ago, there was a huge drought in Somalia. So what we actually did was we organized an event which was actually called Together for Somalia. And we held it locally here at, uh, at Sanam Restaurant and we got a lot of the Somalian community to come in and, you know, and just sort of give their views and express themselves in terms of what's happening in their, their, their homeland and stuff like that. We had a lot of um, Somali speakers or, or, you know, their ethnicity was Somalian. Um, I think we had um, a local MP, which was also Somalian as well. Um, and we ended up raising well over £10,000 uh, for the drought that was happening in Somalia. So through that we were able to, uh, to, to get some water and some food um, into that area. We have connected with them, um, we have done some great stuff with them. They were very involved, they were very engaged. Um, and it's good to see that you know, the Somalian community here are making a difference to the Somalians back home and providing and helping where they can. As you know, we work in many countries around the world and you know, where these people are from and, and where these people have originated from, they do help, they do help and support as much as they can to help their homeland, to help the people that are back there. Because obviously they've gone through struggles and they've gone through hardship and that's why they've come here in the first place, um, in, in some instances. And you know, it's something you want to do. You want to help your family, you want to help where you're from. I think we, we all have that embedded in us one way or another. And no doubt they all support and they help in, in, in different ways.